Okay, so um, today and tomorrow we're covering lesson 11, which um, uh, covers the topic of, of brushes on Illustrator. Now, brushes are not like the kinds of brushes that you would see in Photoshop. They're um, more of a stylized interpretation of traditional brushes. Um, there are basically five different kinds of brushes that you have available um, at your disposal. And um, some of them are pretty wild and pretty unique. Um, we're gonna go, all of, go over all of them today. Over to the left here, uh, here, this is the brush tool, and I'm going to switch to um, single. There we go. So you see right here is the brush tool. Um, and this is what the final project is going to look like. They've done most of the artwork for us, but we're going to apply um, some brush effects to some of these. And what makes this really nice is that if you don't like any of the brush effects, you can always change them. You can always turn them on. Um, that's, again, one of the things that is really, really nice with Illustrator, working with a vector object oriented um, program. The little uh, panel up here, this is the brush panel. <clears throat> By default, when you look at this, it's thumbnail view. So you can see the various kinds of brushes. <clears throat> and what you see here are some of the default brushes. At the bottom down here, we have the brush libraries. And you'll see that there's a bunch of them. Um, if you need arrows, you use arrows for any reason. Um, in this particular lesson, we're going to use some and create some of our own artistic brushes. Um, we're going to use some bristle brushes and um, that sort of thing. Maybe some border brushes or pattern brushes, um, scatter brushes. There's a whole variety of them. So that's what that gives you access to. Um, this is the libraries panel, which is over to the right. And um, in this particular lesson, we don't need that, but it does give you access to it. So hold on here. I got to move this down so you can see. There you go. Okie doke. Um, and then what we have that's great out here is that if you want to remove a brush stroke, you can do that from here if you want. Um, the options of a selected object, you can select that. If you want to create your own custom brush, you can do that. And if you want to delete a brush, you can do that here. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, if we look up here in this little flyout window, you can see that right now we're viewing all of these extra brushes. In this particular lesson, they want us to look at this in list view. I kind of like looking at the brushes myself, but I'll try my best just to follow along with the, the lessons in, in, the, um, in the book. And this is how it looks a little different. You know, you get a sense of how the brushes look, but um, it's not quite the same. But you do get a better, um, with the listing, uh, when they ask for a specific name of brush, it's a little bit more evident over here to the left. So what I want to do is I'm also to avoid some things. I'm going to, instead of showing um, calligraphic brushes, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to turn off art brushes. You know, I'm going to say, you know, turn off bristle brushes. And then I can turn off pattern brushes. And then it just has the basic brushes. Well, I'm going to turn um, calligraphic brushes back on because those are the ones that we're going to use for the first part of the lesson. So there, there are calligraphic brushes, there are art brushes, there are bristle brushes, there are pattern brushes, and there are scattered, scattered brushes um, that we'll be using in this lesson. So the first thing that they want us to do is um, I need to switch. I need to go back to the start lesson here. There we go. And you'll notice that most of the illustration is complete here, but there's some of it that's missing. Okay, um, to start with, they want us to select, for example, these wavy strokes here. And we're gonna apply a, a brush um, pat, a brush to it, um, which is pretty nice. And it's gonna be one of the calligraphic brushes. So what I wanna do, and I think I may have, from the last time I've already selected it um, to use when I was going over this yesterday, is that 
the brush that we want is the 40 point flat. It's this one right here. Now, if you don't see that, then where you find it is you go to the library and you go to, um, let's see, let me go to calligraphic brushes. Uh, they're already up here. So I already have them available. So I have them available. So, but you should see calligraphic brushes down here. Okay. And then you would have access to this 40 point flat right here. That's what we want. Okay. So with that one selected, I'm going to change it from one point to three point. And let me notice that it's because I already have this stroke selected. It, it, it's applied it. So right now, if I want, I can go ahead and I can remove the brush stroke from there and it just takes it back to nothing really, a basic um, stroke. But what I'll do is I'll select the 40 point flat because I'm going to apply it to all of these and I'm going to select, uh, I want it to be a three point stroke. How do I know that? Because that's what the brush tells me or the book tells me. And it's just a, a little bit wider stroke. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll select this stroke here and I'll apply that brush. There you go. And I'm going to change it. I have to change it back again because it defaults back to the one that I had before. I don't want 13 point. I accidentally did that. I want it to be three point. There we go. That's what I want. I want a three point stroke. Now, what I can also do at the same time, and you, we could have selected these by holding down the shift key, but if you recall from one of the first lessons that we did, if you go to select, and we can say same, and you want stroke weight or stroke color, now all of them are selected and we can apply that 40 point brush to that. Okay, and we can change it to three point. And you do have to put in three PT if you're not sure what units you're using. Okay, so there we have that. Now we don't want the pink in the background. We wanna change it to white. And anytime you're using a brush, make sure that the fill is not selected. It's the stroke that's being affected. So don't, you know, select the, the fill. Um, it should be always set to none. Um, and then I'm going to go to this, um, the, the stroke, and I'm going to select white. That's cool. And now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change the opacity of all of these to about, uh, I think they wanted like 30% or something. Um, I'll take a guess <clears throat> and see how that looks. Um, close enough for government work, okay? So there we have that. And it gives kind of a nice, um, you know, nice graphic effect, especially when you see the overlap and the way you would see it if you were working in watercolors or with transparent, translucent paints. It, um, it gives a nice background effect for that. So the next thing that they want us to do, I'm going to move this back over here. Let's make this like so. There we go. Because we're going to work down here now. And so the next calligraphic brush that we're going to use is using the, or the little wavy lines down at the bottom here. Okie doke. So let me check for a minute here. Actually, you know what? Uh, just because I am the anal type, um, I said that was, those were selected at, at 30%. They wanted it to be. 20%. So I'm going to go ahead and change it. Just to try to match it to the book. Not that it has to, but you know, that helps. And when you get a chance, could you switch the interpreters? I need to switch? Yes, please. Okay. Um, hold on here. Um, So it's Brooke that needs to be changed now. Okay. Um, okay. You got it, Brooke? Okay. Okie doke. So the next one, um, 
uh, the next brush that they want us to use is also um, a calligraphic brush. Um, actually, this would be one of the artistic brushes possibly. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to artistic. And yeah, it, it was it was here already. It was artistic calligraphic. Okay. And the one that they, they want us to use is this 15 point flat right here. Okay, so I'm gonna select, um, but you know what? I goofed, as long as these others paths are selected, then they will change accordingly if you switch to a different brush. Um, so you just have to, re to remember, um, which I didn't, is to deselect those brushes or those um, uh, strokes. So now I'll go ahead and I'll select 15 point and that's been added to my library here. And <clears throat> right now I wanna make sure that um, fill is not selected and we're gonna use, make sure that we're using white for the color here. Now I'm gonna select the brush tool and they want us to change it. Um, I think they want it to be a one point brush. So, you know, fairly thin. Now I can come down here and if you have a Wacom tablet or you're working with your mouse, then we can come in here and we can, you know, draw these like so. Little wavy lines. Okay. That's all we're doing. And then if we want, we can go back in and we can edit these. You can, um, a variety of ways of doing this. If I double click on the brush tool, it brings this up. So you can change the width from here and you could also change the accuracy. And in this particular instance, we want these to be nice smooth lines. So um, make sure that you move this slider all the way to the right so they're nice and smooth, okay? And you can decide too that if you wanna edit selected paths, none of them are selected at the moment. Um, if you wanna only affect fill with new strokes, um, if you wanna keep them selected, you can do that. I generally don't do that. I can click okay. Now, if you wanna edit any of these, and this is really pretty cool. If you're, you know, if you're really unhappy with the appearance of any one of these, you can go back to the selection tool select the path and then select the brush again. And then when, you, if, if, when you're outside of the path, notice that it, it, you see the little asterisk to the right of the, the brush icon. But as soon as you move over the path, you no longer see that asterisk. And now when I click and I drag, notice that it redefines that path wherever I click. So if I click here, whoops, that's just created a brand new one. So you have to remember to select the path select it, and then you go back to the brush tool. You move on top of it, and if I click here, notice how it redefined the, the, the nature of that stroke. So that works pretty nicely. Um, they want you to go back in and add a couple more. They want you to um, maybe change the width to two point um, for some of them. Um, and then that's pretty much it for that down here. Um, they said use white, um, and I, that's what I did. But if you look at the samples in the book, um, so for example, I can change this to a two point, and now we'll go ahead again and we'll, you know, that's a little bit wider and it, it's nice and smooth. But um, <clears throat> I already edited it and I changed it, the quality of this opacity. Um, to 20%, but if you do it white, it doesn't look anything like the book at all. So I think it's a, a glitch in the book. Okay. Um, what we can also do is we're gonna go ahead and edit a brush. And that applies to this one. So if you ever wanna go back in and edit a brush, then you have to double click on the brush in here. And so now what we're going to do is I'm gonna change the angle of it because right now it's sort of like a calligraphic brush and I'm gonna set it, I'm gonna name it to um, um, 20 point angle. Twenty PT angled. 
And then they want us to change um, the angle to from 70 degrees to 20 degrees. You can see the preview above here about what it's going to it's going to look like, and it's just flat, you know, flat brush. Uh, I'm having a hard time controlling that, so I'll just type it in. There we go. And randomness, I don't think we want any randomness at all. So no roundness. Um, maybe the randomness is set to 30%. And we'll leave pretty much everything else alone. And then what we can do is, you, as soon as you click OK, it's going to ask you, do you want to leave the strokes? Since we've already used this brush for other strokes, do you want to leave those alone? Or do you want to apply the changes to this, to the, the changes that we made in this brush? Well, I want, in this particular instance, I'm going to leave them alone. Okay. And before I do that, I'm going to come back. Let me double click again. And see, I didn't save the changes. So that's OK. I'm going to go back and change that to 20 degrees. Uh, roundness set to zero, variation, randomize, uh, maybe 30%. And size now is going to be 20 point, not 15 anymore. Okay, and so this is going to be changed to a 20 point angled, 20 point angled. Okay, I'm going to leave the strokes. There we go. So now notice how it's changed here. So that's all we're doing. So um, if you want to remove any of these, and in this case, for example, I want to remove the one that I just selected, then you would use um, select the, the brush that you want to remove. Um, uh, let's select it. There we go. Oh, you have to select the stroke. So if I selected the stroke, I'm going to take this one right here. And if I wanted to remove the properties from this stroke, I would just simply click right here. And notice how it removed all of those. Okay. In this particular instance, though, what they want us to do, let me go ahead and close this for a moment, because we're going to create a brand new brush. Notice this purple stick they got going back here. Well, it, there really isn't much in the way of, of actual properties that have been added to it. But with this path selected, I can now remove, and it's just a straight line. So we're going to leave that alone for a bit, and we're going to create a brand new um, art brush is what we're going to do. And art brushes, um, you can either apply uh, little illustrations to them, and we're going to create one, or they've already done one for us of the tree. So that's, we're going to turn this tree into a brush. You could also apply um, raster images and turn them into brushes. Um, my, in previous versions of Illustrator, they have done that and I have not been pleased with the results, especially when you enlarge the brush. Because as many of you know, if you've had a course in Photoshop, that when you enlarge um, raster images, they tend to get kind of blurry and pixelized. Um, and that's undesirable. But if you use one of these little illustrations that they've provided for us, they really are um, quite nice. They work really, really well. So what I'm going to do here to create um, our art brush is I'm going to, you have to first select the option, the item that you want to turn into a brush. And then we come down here and I click on this button that says new brush and it tells me what kind of brush do I want to turn this into. I want it to become an art brush. And I just click OK. And then I have these various options available to me. And I'm going to name this one tree. That's what it is. And right now we're going to leave it at fixed 100% and I want it to stretch to the length of the stroke and that sort of thing. And I don't have this path selected anymore, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it into a um, my um, tree here. 
So if I should see it over here, do I see it? Do I see it? The brushes, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say short art brushes to make sure that that's available. And there's my tree right down here. So now I'll go ahead and I'll select the stroke and I'll apply the tree to it and watch what happens. There's that tree that um, we just made that goes back there. Kind of cool, huh? So it's a way of creating, another way of creating little illustrations, applying them to strokes um, in a very deliberate way and without a lot of muster fuss. Um, and at the same time, we can go back and we can edit them as well. So um, am I gonna edit that now or do I edit that later? Um, actually, you know what? I got ahead a little bit. I'm gonna finish this up and I'm gonna go back to a different art brush. So on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna edit this one just to show you what happens. And it has to do with the length of um, the, uh, the, the tree itself. Um, you'll notice here that the, the bark that we have here um, extends way beyond in the other parts. And I'm gonna want that to happen with this one too. So if I double click here, Instead, I'm gonna select stretch between guides and right now it does the full length. So instead what we're gonna do is I'm gonna change that. I want it to go from 5.875 inches. So 5.875 inches. Notice where it's gonna be stretched. It's only gonna stretch the trunk of the tree. And then the end is gonna be um, 7.5414, okay, so that's where that's gonna be. So I'm gonna click okay, and it says apply to strokes, and I'm gonna select yes, and watch over to the left and see how it's being affected. See how the trunk of the tree got extended? So there's a lot, you know, various ways that you have to control these, which is really kind of nice, okay? So what do I have going on here? This one shouldn't be here. Yeah, I don't know what I did there. So let me go back. We're gonna use um, a different kind of art brush over here. And we want it to look somewhat like ferns, but instead we're gonna use what is called um, a charcoal brush for that. So I don't know if I already have it in here. Here's, um, I'm gonna go back under here and I'm gonna to go to artistic and I'm gonna to go to chalk charcoal pencil. And then I'm gonna come over here when this pops up and you can't edit these from here. You have to add them to your library and then you'll be able to add them. Um, that's the chalk scribble, chalk round. Uh, we want the charcoal. So I'm gonna add the charcoal. So make sure that nothing is selected and I've added charcoal and now I can close this. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna check the book to see what size we want for that. Um, we're gonna make it pretty wide. They want it to be not one point, but 10 point. So that's a, a fairly wide um, brush. So there we go. And now I'm going to come over to the left and I'm going to select the brush tool and I want to select um, charcoal. And now I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to go like so. And notice that it's using the stroke color for that. So I don't want it purple. Um, I can make it a deep green um, or I can make it black. Okay. And we'll come back and we'll use the brush tool again. And let's go over that. Okay. Now it's sort of, you know, it's, it's charcoal like, but it has a brush, um, it has a fern like appearance. Kind of cool. Um, again, to achieve this result any other way would be extremely difficult.
And again, it's these effects for these styles that are being applied to paths. So you can always go back and edit the brush or you can um, remove the, the brush from that path and um, you can change it is, you know, until the cows come home as long as you want, as, you know, as, um, in, indefinitely. So there we go. So I created the art brush. We applied another brush. Now we're going to use what are called bristle brushes. Can we have bristle, a interpreter? You know, change again? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Okay, Bernice, you're on. So what they want us to do, and if we look at the layers panel here, I don't know that it's that critical, but I'm gonna select the cabin layer now. And I want, I guess I could select the artwork instead. I, I'm gonna, um, when I, I will need the cabin for another pattern brush when I add that, but I wanna, want this to be behind the smokestack here. So the bristle brush that we want to add to this, okay, is a flat fan. So again, define that. Um, it's going to be in the libraries. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the brush panel back up. I'm going to make sure that bristle brushes are visible, show bristle brushes. And you can see that I already have the mop brush that I added it, but um, for you, you'll have to go down to libraries and you go to bristle brush and you go to bristle library and that pops up and the, the three millimeter one that you want, the little mop fan brush, I guess that they want is at the very end. So that's the one that we want, the flat fan. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll add that. I'll close that. And I'm going to go ahead and double click because we're going to make some edits to this. Okay. The size, we're going to leave it 350 mil, uh, three millimeters. Um, I guess from the other day, this already affected the changes that I made. We want the length to be 150%. We want the density to be 30. There's all of these variables that you can go in and tweak. And then the last thing on the stiffness is 50%. So when you're working on this lesson from the book, to get the same results, then this is what you need here. And what this does is it gives you kind of a watercolor-like effect. So now when I select this brush, I make sure that I don't, I mean, I don't want white or um, black selected, I want white. Again, you don't want to fill. And I come back here and I make kind of a little wavy line. Notice how it has kind of a nice, smoky feel. And notice that it's very thin, so I need to change that. I'm going to go back and I'm going to change this to three, three point, I think. I'm going to change it to three point just to see how the different look, appearance, see what I get from here. Three point. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Isn't that cool? It really has kind of a smoky feel to it, doesn't it? I mean, it, it's stylized, but it looks very nice. Now, if you want, and what the book is suggesting that we do, that we hit Command Y to turn this off, we select one of the brushes that we made, and then we, because maybe otherwise it'd be difficult to select, and we can change the stroke color to the gray, okay? Now we can go back, command Y to bring that back. And then we have just a, a nice look here. Okay, so it's, again, it's, they're all, you know, the bristle brushes are just a little bit different. And there's lots of different kinds of bristle brushes. So you might want to, um, to check them out. Um, anyway. I think I have all of that done. Painting with a bristle brush, got that done. Yeah, the next one is we're gonna work with patterns. So now we have pattern brushes. Um, so these brushes so far have sort of simulated traditional um, brushes, but in a stylized manner. 
Um, the next thing that we're moving into now is um, a, what is called a pattern brush. And that can be used for borders. And in this particular instance, I'm going to close this. I'm going to make sure that we have pattern, um, show pattern, make sure that that's visible. And then I'm going to close. And what I want to do with the brush is that if we look down here in our library of brushes and we look at um, no, where's our pattern brush? Maybe, no, it's already exists. So hold on here. So we want borders and frame. Yeah, we want borders and frames right here. So this is our pattern brush, but it's borders and frames. And what we want to select is mahogany here. And where we want to apply it is so that we're going to get to these strokes back here, these yellow strokes. It's going to look like um, we've you know turned this into mahogany. So I want to select this here, I'm going to put it, this into the isolation mode. So by selecting it and then double clicking, notice that I have just these guys selected. Now watch what happens when I apply mahogany to it. Okay, I should probably zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here. Okay. So it looks decidedly different, doesn't it? I mean, it it's, doesn't look like real mahogany, but it's a nice interpretation or a nice stylized ma mahogany. So now what I can do is I can, if I need to, I can double click to edit this. Or I can also, with it applied, I can go to the, um, the properties panel and then I can select here um, under this little button here, options of the selected object. And you can say stretch to fit. You can say add space to fit, approximate path. You can flip, you know, horizontal. And we can look at the preview, turn that off. Notice a difference. Okay. We can colorize from here and we can change the scale from here. So what they want us to do is to make sure that we have the scale changed to 70%. So it's a little bit smaller. That's all we're doing here. We're leaving the rest alone. So I can turn off preview, turn that back on. Notice how it reduces the, the size and the scale of it a little bit. But again, you know, very nice, very effective. It's a sweet little illustration that they have going on here. Okay. Now the next, this is what would be called a pattern brush. And the next step is that we're gonna create our own pattern brush to create the lights that go around um, above here and also around the door. And they've already created the, the little illustrations for us. So let me click okay. So that's changed. Now I can get out of isolation mode. And I can close this. And we're going to create our own pattern brushes. Now we want, see where the green lines are here and around the door? If we look at the finished version, and I think this is really pretty cool. Um, notice how we have this string of lights that go across the, um, the bottom of the deck. And then the lights go around the border of the door. Well, by creating your own custom pattern brush, um, you can really do that quite nicely. Now, I did that the other day, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create another one for you. So um, let me move over. Because what we want to do, I need to zoom out, I guess, so I can see. They've created these two little illustrations for us. 
Now, there are certain things that you can't, the pattern brushes that you cannot add. Um, you know, you can't add gradients. It's different than what I did the other day with um, the symbol uh, sprayer. Symbols can be Ill, little illustrations. They can, you, you can add um, gradients and patterns and all sorts of things. To this, to a pattern brush, you cannot add gradients. Um, and there's a few other things that you can't add as well. But they've made these little illustrations for us. So in order to turn this into a pattern, if you recall from the other day, what you have to do is you have to bring up your swatch panel. And you'll notice that I already did that the other day. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it in here. And now notice that that's been added. And if I double click on there, I can name it and I'll just call it um, light, you know. Okay, and now we can close that and we can get out of the pattern editing mode. Now, this, we're gonna do the same for this one and I'm gonna, this one is, should be named corner. So we'll click on here and this one is corner light. So I'll just rename it corner light. And we'll go ahead and we'll close that and we'll get out of the edit mode. So before you can create a pattern brush, you have to create patterns. And these are nice little, you know, flat 2D illustrations. Now I can close the patterns and it's a, kind of important that you name them. Now I can go back in here and make sure that the brush panel is up. And I want to create a brand new brush. Okay. And I want it to be a pattern brush. Okay. And it will let you know that there's certain kinds of things that it, you can turn it into and certain thing, kinds of brushes that you can't. So you, this could not be a pattern, a scatter brush, or it couldn't be a, an art brush. But the symbol sprayer, you could scatter it. You know, that would be kind of nice. So I'll, I'll make a pattern brush. And when that comes, that little dialog box comes up, we'll name it lights. And now we want to specify which of those illustrations that we turned into patterns do we want to use for the corner. So I click here and you can see over here, we have, there's my corner light. I want that to be there. So every time the path turns a sharp angle, it will place that little illustration. And then on the straightaways, it's going to place the other light. So I click there and I want to select that light. And here's a preview of what it's going to look like. Now, um, there are some really intricate pattern um, brushes that you should look into that make it look like they are, it, it's a, a continuous strand of rope or string or things like that. that they put together with little end um, patterns, you know, beginning and ends so that they look, it looks complete. It doesn't look truncated in any way. So anyway, this gives us a preview and that's really kind of nice. Now what I can do is I can come back in. Let me go back over here. I kind of goofed because I was in the finished version here. So now I got to do that again. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I can't talk and chew gum at the same time. So let me close this. Let's bring this back up. And so what I need to do is I need to take this and I need to drag it in here. Boom. So I'll rename this again. So it bears repeating, I suppose. We'll name this light. Okay. Won't take me about a minute to do this. And we'll go back out of the edit mode for that pattern. And then we're going to select this one. And I'm going to turn this into a pattern. Whoops, no, come on. There we go. We'll name this one quarter light. Okay, and we'll go out of there. We're out of the edit mode. 
Okie doke. So I have both of them. Now I can go back and I can create my custom brush. So I'll make sure that I have my brush panel up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a brush. I want it to be a pattern brush. Click OK and we'll do the same thing. Click here. I want this to one to be a corner. I want this one to be light. Gives me a preview. We're going to change the scale of this later. I'm going to, so I'm going to do it now to about 20% because right now the size is what you made those objects. But it, again, it's kind of nice. You can make it whatever size they need to be. And you can flip along horizontal or vertical. You can stretch to fit. You can add space to fit. There's a whole variety of things that you can do. Click OK. Now I'm going to go back over to our cabin here. I want to select that stroke. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select pattern brush one. because That's what I just created. And there's my little strand of lights. And now notice that you don't see the corner lights because there is no corner. But as soon as we select, whoops, I didn't want to do that. As soon as we select the door, there we go. And I apply that pattern. And I zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Notice that wherever there is a, a corner, an abrupt change in direction, it applies that corner light. Um, there's a whole bunch of um, pattern brushes in the libraries that you should check out that are really kind of cool. Um, and they're for borders and all sorts of stuff. Some of them are kind of hokey. Um, but you know, in the right context, they would work really, really well. Um, so next and probably last thing that we have to do here, and this is one of my favorites, is that we're gonna use something called a blob brush. Okay, so let me make sure that all of these guys are deselected. Let me zoom out here. When you get a chance, Professor, would you mind switching to me? Sure. Thank you. Oops, I didn't want to do that. There you go. So Bernice, you're spotlighted? No, to Brooke. Oh, you want it to switch to Brooke. OK, sorry. All right. Got it. OK. OK. So let me um, move over to the side now. I'm going to close this. And um, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to use the blob tool and or blob brush, if you want to call it that. And then we're going to turn that into a scatter, scatter brush. So um, to use the blob brush, and that's over here, um, it's underneath the paintbrush tool, blob brush. OK? But what I'm going to do, I'm going to start in this one now. This type of brush works with a fill, not with a stroke. So I'm going to flip the, um, I'm going to, instead of the green stroke, um, let me double click, or let me just cancel. Let me click from here. And I want this to be this pink color. And I'm going to flip it so that now it's um, a pink fill and a uh, uh, no stroke. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, just a little circle here. So with the ellipse tool, like so. OK. And now with the blob brush, I can come in here. And to change the size of the brush, um, like to change the size of most, most things, to the right of the P key, there are two bracket keys. The right bracket key enlarges it. The left bracket key reduces the size of it. And now what I can do is I can click in here. And you might think that you're just adding um, shapes on top of this. But in fact, it is when you use the same color, what it's doing is it's actually adding to the original shape. And to prove 
the proof of that. So here's my little flower shape. Is that when I hit Command Y, notice that it's a single outline. So for those of you who have a Wacom tablet, or if you don't mind drawing with your mouse, and you prefer, you know, like sketching with a pencil or a pen, the blob brush might be um, an option for you. So if I turn that back on, then at any time, if you want to erase any parts of this, you can always use the eraser tool. So I can come back in here and I can erase like so. And notice how that just cuts part of that away. Okay. And if I hit Command Y again, you can see I actually cut a hole through that shape. Okay, kind of cool. So this is a kind of a, a big flower, but what I want to do is I want to take it now and I want to turn this into a brush. And this is going to be a scatter brush. And there are various ways once we turn it into a scatter brush of randomizing it. Um, you can randomize the scale, you can randomize the rotation, you can randomize all sorts of things with it. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and bring the brush tool back up. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to add a brush. This is going to be a scatter brush. Okay, I'm going to click OK. A little dialog box pops up. So, so the size, I'm going to go ahead and make it fixed. And I'm going to reduce it to maybe 20%. And I'm guessing at the moment. And I know the book probably has something very specific, but um, it has to do with the size of the flower that I made. Um, do you want the spacing to be fixed or do you want to randomize it? If you would rather randomize it, I can select randomize. So you can go from maybe 50% to 100%, 100%, 200%, maybe 100% to 150%. You can also scatter, you know, you can randomize that from 0% to maybe 50%. And you can also change the rotation of it if you want. In our particular case, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to click OK. Now I've added to my library here. There's my little flower. Now watch what happens. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let's deselect the flower and zoom out. And on the tree over here, if I use the brush tool, like so, where's my brush tool? That's the blob brush, the paint brush tool. And I'm going to select this. And if I just click and drag like so, Notice how it's randomizing the placement of those flowers. They aren't everywhere. So that can be kind of nice. Um, the other day, I forget who it was that asked me, how can you create randomized patterns? But when, every time you do that, notice that you're adding more strokes to it. It's not the same as the, the symbol sprayer, where they're just individual little objects. Every time you do that, you're adding a path that you have to at some point edit. And it can be a, a tangled web of, of, you know, a messy thing when you're all done. In fact, if you look at the, the line work of this and we're done with this, it can be really a little bit overwhelming if you're not careful. And that goes back to the lab, last lesson that we covered with layers and maybe you want to isolate them in some way to make it a little bit more manageable. So, um, you know what, I see, I, I goofed here. This one, I wanted, yeah, because I probably left this. Let's go back here. And I probably want none for the fill and the stroke. Let's make sure the stroke, and I'll go ahead and I'll add that pattern fill. There we go. So I forgot to deselect the door. And as I said, you can see what happens when you don't, and it can really mess up your artwork. So, so there you have it, different kinds of brushes. 
for stylized illustrations um, where Adobe Illustrator excels, um, you can't beat these. You really can't. And com combined with the type tool and some of the other features and controlling color and this and that, it is a very powerful program. You can do some really wonderful things with all of it. So um, I don't know if there's anything more um, that I have for today. But I, again, I do want to remind all of you who have stayed in here throughout the duration of my lecture, make sure that you're staying current on your lessons and that you upload them to Google Drive. That if you haven't finished your um, skateboard decks um, to do that soon, so that you'll have the remainder of the two weeks that we're here, you know, to finish up lessons, because we have this week 11 and 12 and next week 13 and 14. And at the end of next week, we will have um, the last or final project will be due. Okay. Um, are there any questions? No? Let me go ahead and temporarily stop. Um, it might be permanent, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop. Um, pause recording. And then that, that could be it for today, unless you have questions. Okay. Okay. So um, the question was asked, um, what are we going to do for the final assignment? You have an option. And if you look under my handouts page, you'll see for ART 186, we've done the mask, we've done the Tokidoki assignment. Normally I assign the architectural detail for the final assignment, but I will give you three options. If you would rather do the product assignment, which is sort of a stylized photorealism assignment, you can take from any photograph that you like of some sort of product that could be a perfume bottle, it could be a car, it could be, um, I don't know, a stapler, a camera, you name it, a product that you want to try to um, illustrate in using Adobe Illustrator, then you're welcome to do so. If you would like to be more experimental and try some of these tools that we really haven't had the opportunity to explore, then the architectural detail would be a good option. Okay, so if I click here, and it, look at them and we can talk about these this more tomorrow if you'd like. Um, but I think they're pretty um, self-explanatory. Um, the architectural detail is meant to be an, a, an experimental project. Using tools and styles that you really haven't explored this semester. And I suggest architectural detail, but then, you know, I said I've given you three options. And it's more open-ended then, so if you don't want to do an architectural detail and you would rather try maybe a portrait, it could be a portrait of your dog, it could be a self-portrait, it could be a portrait of your friend or spouse or whatever, you know, your grandmother. Um, I don't care. If you want to try a portrait and use that as an experimental project, that would be great. And there are some good examples of experimental or um, portraits that are that I have on my um, homepage for the samples of Kurt's classes um, that you're welcome to look at. Okie doke. Does that answer everybody's questions? Yeah, okay. So yeah, um, get the get the skateboard decks done soon. Um, and you'll still have plenty of time to do the final assignment. And just make sure that you're current on the lessons and that you do post everything on Google Drive so that I can just look at it in your folder and I can check them off and say, okay, you're good to go. You've done all the lessons. You have the full 10 points, boom. You've done the assignments and, you know, by, by the end of this week, I will have the skateboard deck graded. And the ones, as I said, the ones that I've seen so far look really very nice. So I'd like to talk about those more tomorrow. Okay. So are we, are there any more questions?
or are we done for today? It, I guess the other question is, is this, this class is supposed to be taught asynchronously. And so you do have the option. You don't have to be here with me live. You have the recorded video to watch, so you can watch them at any time. So they're, they're recorded tutorials. So is this system working out for you? Is my website working out for you? I need to know for the fall. You know, if there's any, if you have any suggestions, I would appreciate it because I have to finish things up. Um, okay, for my fall semester. So you do like it, it works for you. Well, I appreciate that, thank you. Again, this has been, you know, I don't know what you guys are experiencing in your other classes at Cerritos, um, but you know, like you, the online format has been thrust upon us. Um, and so all of this has been done very quickly and on the fly. My website has been, um, in existence for a while, but um, I've had to adapt it to this online format. So, um, yeah, I don't know how well it's working or not. I've, for the 30 plus years I've been at Cerritos, I've only taught in class. I've taught technology courses like this forever, but um, so it's not, that isn't new to me, but not being with you in person is new. Okie doke. Well, if we're done for today, have a good afternoon. Um, I can review some of this lesson tomorrow, but really what I'd like to talk about more maybe is the final assignment and to be able to do a critique um, of your skateboard decks. And again, it's a very informal critique. It's not meant to, um, you know, put anyone on the spot. Because as I said, I think most of them are really very nice. The ones that I've seen, okay. Okay, well, if, if that's it, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to stop recording.